So my name is Tal Mizrahi. I'm from the Huawei Smart Platform uh, Innovation Lab here in Haifa. And this paper is based on joint work with Alon, Yoni, Michael, and Elad from the Technion, and also with Gideon and Navon from Marvell. And this is a project that I was working on when I was at Marvell in my previous job. And it's about networking. It's about network telemetry specifically. So a little bit of background. Network measurement is important in high-speed networks. Specifically, it's important in order to detect failures, congestion, anomalies, elephant flows. So the term OAM has been around for many years. It refers to the ability to measure and monitor a network. And in the last few years, we hear more and more the term network telemetry, which refers to the ability to measure and also to export these measurements to an external point, a remote location. So everyone knows ping and trace route, right? OK, so in addition to ping and trace route, we have also have other mechanisms. We have passive monitoring, like NetFlow, IPFIX, also very commonly used. In carrier networks, there is dozens of different protocols and standards which are used for measurement, for monitoring, and this, these have been around for many years. So with all these different existing mechanisms for measurement and for monitoring, the question that comes up is, what are we missing here, right? So this is an example I always like to give. It's about fate sharing. So we've all been there. You're sitting at home. You're working on your computer. You're connected to a network. And suddenly it feels like the network is not performing very well. You're still connected, but the performance is not as high as it was before. So what do you do? You open one of these web-based network measurement tools, like speed test, and it looks like the performance is perfect. The latency, the bandwidth, everything is as expected. And the reason for that is that most of the ISPs can detect these speed tests and give them higher priority, right? <laughs> so fate sharing is a very fundamental issue in measurement. It basically refers to the fact that you want the uh, traffic that is used for measurement to share its fate with the actual data traffic that you want to measure. So because of fate sharing, what we've been hearing a lot about in the last few years is piggybacked measurement. Okay, it's basically the ability to take the measurement information and piggyback it onto actual data packets. And this approach is used, for example, in IOM and INT, which are very well-known protocols from the last few years, and also in AMPM, which is what we talk about today. So first, a few words about IOM and INT. So these are two kind of similar protocols, and the idea is that every network device along the path can piggyback measurement-related information onto data packets, information like timestamps and queue states, and some of this information is exported to a server. So obviously you get very detailed per packet, per flow information, but the cost is that you have a lot of overhead for each data packet. So this is IOM and INT. AMPM, which is a project we've been working on for a few years now, is uh, a project that uh, was published by the IETF, is still in progress in the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. And the question that we're trying to address in AMPM is what can you do with one bit per packet, one bit in the header of every data packet. We call this a marking bit. So let's see two basic things that you can do. One thing you can do is you can have a constant value in that bit most of the time, and then occasionally you can have a different value in that bit for one specific packet. We call that a pulse. Or another thing you can do, you can change the value of this bit periodically and then you can try to detect when there is a step in the value of the bit. 
So these are two basic abstractions. Let's see how you can use pulse marking in order to measure delay in the network. Okay, so the idea most of the time the marking bit has a constant value. Occasionally you have one special packet which has a different value. Whenever the devices detect that special packet, they measure the time of reception of that packet and they send that timestamp to an external server. And then the server, based on comparing between these two timestamps, can compute the delay between the two devices in this case. This is pulse marking. It can also be used for loss measurement. Okay, so the idea is that the network devices both keep a counter, a data uh, packet counter, okay, which is incremented for each packet. And each time the devices see that special packet, the pulse packet, they both export the counter to the external server. Another server, by comparing the counters, can compute how many packets got lost. So one question that comes to mind here is what happens if there's out-of-order delivery? Okay, so if that special packet doesn't arrive in order with the, same, uh, with the other packets which are not uh, with the same value in the marking bit. So in order to address out-of-order delivery, there's also another uh, method, which is alternate marking or step marking. And the idea here is that the value of the marking bit changes periodically, which means that uh, the, the data packets are split into consecutive blocks of data. Okay, so for each block, at the end of the period, at the end of the block, each of the network devices will export the number of packets in the previous block, okay, in the previous uh, block of uh, data packets. And now by comparing these two counters, we can know how many packets got lost. But the main thing to emphasize here is that we're maintaining different counters for each color, okay, for each marking bit value. And we always export the counter after the period was over, after all the packets of the block were transmitted or received. So this guarantees that uh, we are resilient to out-of-order delivery. This is alternate marking. Now, there's also double marking. Double marking uses two bits in the header of each data packet. You have uh, one bit which uses the alternate marking idea, the other bit which uses the pulse marking idea. So we can see these two bits. Alternate marking is used for loss measurement. Pulse marking is used for delay measurement. Now we have both these metrics are measured accurately, but we need two bits per packet. Okay, so it's more expensive, obviously. But what you can do is use multiplex marking. So you can enjoy the best of both worlds. Most of the time, you get this uh, value which changes periodically, but more or less in the middle of each period, you have one packet with a marking bit which is different from the other packets. So this allows you to measure both delay and loss very accurately to enjoy the benefits of both methods, and, but you only need one bit per data packet. So this is probably the best method from the methods we saw so far. And the question that comes to mind here is, how do you implement this? So in this work, uh, we basically uh, present a design and implementation of AMPM. And the basic question here is, what are the ingredients you need in order to implement this? So one thing you need is a match action lookup which is a basic feature which, uh, ha which exists in most switches today. Another thing you need is per flow state in order to be able to detect that first packet in the period, okay, that step. And the third thing you need is something we like to call time as a match or time flip. So a few words about that, what is time flip? The idea in time flip is that you use time, the current time, as part of the match action lookup. So 
since time is part of the match criterion, that means you can define a rule which is confined to a specific time range. So for example, you can define a match action rule which has a periodic behavior, okay, which is exactly what we need for AMPM. So when you take these three ingredients, you can basically define what we do in the paper is we define the match action rules that are required in order to implement uh, the step marking approach, the pulse marking approach. So this is shown in the paper. But then there's a, uh, the question of how do you implement multiplexed marking. So the naive approach is to just keep track of the marking bit, to keep track of its value. When you see a packet which has a different value from the previous packets, you say, okay, that's probably a pulse. And when you see more than one packet, which has a different value from the previous packets, you assume that's a step. Okay, so this approach is uh, not trivial to implement. It requires more state. What we're suggesting, what we're proposing in this paper, is a time multiplexed parsing approach, which means, first of all, you divide time into time slots. And then in each time slot, the marking bit has a different interpretation. The parsing gives that bit a different interpretation. So for example, in some of the time slots, the marking bit is used in order to detect the step. And in other slots, the marking bit is used in order to detect the pulse. So now based on this approach, we can define the match action rules which are required in order to implement uh, multiplexed marking, and this can be implemented in uh, this can be implemented in most uh, commercial switches or in P4 switches based on these uh, match action rules. So in the paper, we also show uh, two forms of evaluation. One is based on a hardware-based uh, uh, implementation using Marvell switches. And the other is software-based, uh, implemented in P4, and the, uh, the code is open source. It's available online. So a few words about where AMPM is going. So we said that network telemetry is very important, and we also said that low overhead is important. So that's why we believe in AMPM. But it's not only us that believe in AMPM. Uh, AMPM is under discussion in the ITF in six different working groups in the context of various different network protocols. Uh, so it's currently evolving. But it's also actually deployed in a real network, uh, in a mobile backhaul network of Telecom Italia um, with o over a thousand uh, e-node Bs. So to summarize, in this paper, uh, we present a design and implementation of AMPM. We show uh, both a hardware-based implement implementation and a software-based one. Experimental results. And notably, uh, we present a novel time-based uh, multiplexing parsing approach. Thanks. First of all, I have to announce that there will be additional announcement after the question round here, so don't run away immediately and ask questions as many as you want, which can fit in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> so who wants to start? Because otherwise I start. Which is not good. Because I have two questions. Um, the first question I have is uh, you reduce everything to one bit. So first of all, what is your sample rate? And if you have to send packets around anyway to do your uh, telemetry uh, information or to get it, um, is this bit really that important or can you just put in more bits, 10 or 20? Is it really that possible? So, uh, right, the sampling rate is important. It, it, it's a question of uh, what is the rate of your data traffic? Mm -hmm. And also a question of uh, what are the intervals? We didn't talk about that, but in most of our testing, the interval was around one second or a few seconds. Okay. So Maybe that means you need at least one or a small number of packets per second mm -hmm. Okay, in that context. That means if you have a second without any packets, 
you don't have any measurements in that uh, second, which is okay, you're just missing some uh, measurements. If you need a measurement in that specific second, you can uh, push some uh, probe packets in order mm -hmm. to achieve that measurement. Okay, and one question I have to ask, if I would now be Netflix or another company, I would immediately think about how can I sheet the system? And uh, is there an opportunity for uh, providers to let them look to deploy or to deliver fast and indeed it's not the network, it's, it's a provider who does uh, the slow traffic or who is responsible for slow traffic? So you mean the, the uh, example we started from with the fate sharing? Yes. Yeah, so I think in that example it was the ISP, right? Mm -hmm. And the ISP wants to show that uh, they're performing well. But uh, I think that at the endpoints like Netflix, mm -hmm. they would uh, like to use uh, these kinds of mechanisms because that way they don't depend on the ISPs. Okay, that's that way they can actually measure the traffic without be depending on uh, what happens in the middle. Okay, so it's, it's helping them more than the providers. Right, yes. Okay, so thank you very much again. <laughs>